consider this problem. So we have a projectile motion situation where a ball is being launched from the ground at an angle of 60 degrees with a speed of 80 meters per second. So it goes up above the building and then it lands on the building. And the building is 200 meters high above the ground level. With this information, what is the speed at which the ball strikes the building? Now, we're going to solve this problem using two techniques. First, we're going to use kinematics to solve this projectile motion problem. And then second, we're going to use a shorter method, in this case, the conservation of energy, to get the same result. So let's begin. The first equation that we could use is this one. y final is equal to y initial plus vy initial t plus one half at squared. Using this equation, we could find the time it takes for the ball to go from position A to position B. Once we have the time, we can calculate the final speed in the x direction and in the y direction just before it strikes the building. And then with that, we can get the final speed overall. So y initial is 0. That is the height at point A. At point B, y final is 200. Vy initial, so we have the vector v. To find the x component of the velocity, it's v cosine theta. And to find the y component, it's v sine theta. So vy initial is going to be 80 sine 60. Eighty sine sixty is sixty nine point two eight two T. And then this is going to be plus one half times the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative nine point eight. So half of negative nine point eight is going to be negative four point nine T squared. Now I'm going to take everything from the right side and move it to the left side. So negative four point nine T squared is going to become positive. 4.9 t squared, and this term will be negative on the left side. So it's negative 69.282 t. The 200 is going to stay on the left side, so that's going to remain as positive 200, and this is going to equal 0. So right now, we have a quadratic equation in standard form. So we're going to use that to get the value of t. So t is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now in this example, a is 4.9, b is that number, c is 200. Sixty-nine point two eight two squared. That's forty-eight hundred. And C is two hundred. And this is divided by two times A. A is four point nine. So these two negative signs will cancel. So we're going to have positive 69.282 plus or minus 4,800 minus 4 times 4.9 times 200 is 880. And then if we take the square root of 880, that's going to give us 29.665. And 2 times 4.9 is 9.8.
So we're going to get two answers. 69.282 plus 29.665 divided by 9.8. That gives us the first answer, which is about 10.0966. I'm going to round that to 10.1 seconds. Now to get the second answer, we're going to use the subtraction sign instead of the positive sign. So 69.282 minus 29.665 divided by 9.8. So the second time answer is 4.04 .04 seconds. Now you might be wondering which time value should we use? Now keep in, keep in mind there are two points in this trajectory that has a height of 200. This point here, point B, and a new point that we could define, point C. At both of these points, Y final is 200. So that's why we have two different time values. At point C, the time it takes to get to this point, that's going to be the first time value, or the smaller of the two. So that's 4.04 .04 seconds. The second one is going to be the larger time value, so that's going to be 10.1 seconds. So we want to find the final velocity or the final speed just before it hits the building at point B. So therefore, we don't need this value. So I'm going to rewrite this answer here. So T is 10.1 seconds. So now that we have t, let's calculate the horizontal and the vertical velocity components at point b. So let's start with vx. For projectile motion, vx is constant. vx is simply going to be v cosine theta. So that's 80 cosine 60. There's no acceleration in the x direction in this problem. So Vx is always going to be this value, which is 40 meters per second. Now, Vy changes due to the acceleration of gravity. So to find Vy, we need to use this equation. Vy final is equal to Vy initial plus At. Vy initial, that's V sine theta, so that's 80 sine 60. The acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8. And the time it takes to go from A to B is 10.1 seconds. AD sine 60, we know that value. It's 69.282 minus 9.8 times 10.1. That will give us negative 29.698 meters per second. Now, these values make sense if you think about it because if you look at the velocity vector it's going towards quadrant four so it's going in this direction and in quadrant four x is positive so we can see why we have a positive value for v for vx but y is negative so we can see why uh, vy has the negative sign in front of it because vy is going down and our goal is to find VF. So using the Pythagorean theorem, VF is going to be the square root of VX squared plus VY squared. So the magnitude of the final velocity will be the final speed, which is what we're looking for. Speed is always positive. So VX is 40. We're going to square that. And then VY once we square it, the negative sign is just going to disappear. So this gives us an answer of 49.8 meters per second. So that is the final speed of the projectile just before it hits the building at point B. Now, we're going to use conservation of energy to get the same answer. 
Now this is going to be a lot simpler and a lot faster. So what we need to determine is the types of energies that we have at the beginning and at the end of the trajectory. At point A, the ball is at ground level, so for the most part, it doesn't have any potential energy. So it only has kinetic energy at point A because it's moving. Now, just before it hits the top of the building at point B, the object still has kinetic energy. But at point B, because it's above ground level, relative to the ground, it has potential energy. So initially, at point A, all we had was kinetic energy to begin with. At point B, the ball still had kinetic energy, we'll call it final kinetic energy, and it also has potential energy. That is gravitational potential energy. Initial kinetic energy, that's going to be 1 half mv initial squared. The final kinetic energy will be 1 half mv final squared. And the formula for gravitational potential energy is MGH. Now, we don't have the mass of the ball, but that's okay because if we divide everything by M, M will disappear. So it's going to be 1 half V initial squared. So V initial is 6. No, that's not V initial. V initial is 80. So in this formula, this is not Vx or Vy, this is just V. Our goal is to calculate V final. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. And then we have the height, which is 200. Now, because I'm dealing with energy here, Notice that I didn't use negative 9.8. Otherwise, if you were to use negative 9.8, that's going to it's going to give you a different answer. So, because if you were just to calculate the gravitational potential energy of the ball at point B, that's going to be a positive value. So that's why I chose to use positive 9.8 here. For those of you who might be wondering. Now, 80 squared is 6400. Half of that is 3,200. Nine point eight times 200, that's going to be 1,960. 3,200 minus 1,960, that's 1,240. And in order to get rid of the 1 half, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So 1,240 times 2 is 2,480. And that's going to equal V final squared. Now, taking the square root of both sides, we're going to get that V final is 49.8 meters per second. As you could see, it was a lot faster to get the answer using the conservation of energy approach. So I want you to sh I wanted to show you this example so you have other ways of solving projectile motion problems. So you're not just limited to using the kinematic equations. You could use conservation of energy to solve for things like the height or the final velocity as we've done so in this problem. By the way, for those of you who want more example problems on projectile motion or conservation of energy, or even other physics topics, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting some content there that you may find beneficial. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.